In this lecture, I'm going to be talking about the chain rule, which is our latest um, derivative rule. So, um, so far we know how the uh, derivative rules for computing the derivatives of polynomials, um, of exponential functions, trig functions, and also for computing the derivatives of products and quotients. So what if we have something like um, h of x equals 28x plus 6 to the 100th power? Um, how could we go about finding h prime of x with all of the rules that we have so far? Well, we could multiply this out times itself 100 times and turn it into a polynomial and then take the derivative, but that would be um, quite uh, time consuming for us. So the idea here is to notice that this function h that I have here can be expressed as a composition of functions. So let's try to find f and g so that um, h of x can be written as f of g of x. So looking at this I see that my inside function here g of x I could say is 28x plus 6 and that my outside function f of x could be x to the 100. Then if I look at computing f of g of x with these definitions for f and g, I would see that f of 28x plus 6 is equal to 28x plus 6 to the 100th power. So what I'd like um, for a derivative rule um, is something that's similar to my, my product rule and my quotient rule. I want a rule that says if my function h is f of g, f composed with g, then my derivative rule is something um, that depends on f and g, something that has to do with the derivatives of f and g. So what does that rule look like? So this is what we call the chain rule, which I call also um, call the composition rule, because it's going to tell us how we can take the derivative of a composition of two functions. So what the chain rule says is, suppose we have a function g that's differentiable at x, so it makes sense to talk about g prime of x, and a function y equals f of u that's differentiable at u equals g of x. Then our composition function, f of g of x, will be differentiable at x, and we can express its derivative in the following ways. So we just have two different notations here. So the first way um, is using this notation here where we have um, dy dx equals dy du, so this is um, the derivative of y with respect to u times the derivative of u with respect to x. So you can kind of remember this rule by seeing that these, these du's would quote cancel. Um, we won't treat these, these du's and dx's as um, something by themselves, we'll only treat them as part of this notation, but just as a way of um, remembering the rule you can see that you're multiplying um, these two pieces together. Another way to notate this rule is to think about doing um, the derivative with respect to x of f of g of x as f prime of g of x, so this is the derivative of the outside function evaluated at the inside function, again times the derivative of the inside function. So the chain rule always has these two pieces, um, and a very common error is to just do the first piece, so we have to be very careful and remember to also multiply times the derivative of that inside function. So sometimes this piece here, multiplying times the derivative of the inside function, is called the tail. So we'll say don't forget the tail. Okay, so I think we want to start doing some um, examples to practice using this rule. And it um, often comes down to just identifying how you can write your given function as a composition of um, two or more functions. So we've just restated the, the chain rule here in its two different forms. And in this example, I'm interested in using this rule to now find the derivative of y equals 28x plus 6 to the 100 power. Um, so first I'll, I'll make use of um, this um, notation, and then we'll see how we can also use this notation. And this one will be, um, the second one will be the one we use more often. Um, here, um, as I'm um, practicing using the chain rule, I'm going to write down these individual functions that I have. So my outside function, my y equals f of u, is u to the 100, so I could call um, y my function u to the 100, that's my outside function. And then I could call that inside function here, u equals g of x, u equals 28x plus 6. 
So with these two definitions here of y and u, I can talk about finding dy dx. So if I go over here and first find dy du, well, if y is equal to u to the 100, then the derivative of y with respect to u is just using my power rule, so I have 100 u to the 99. And I can also find du dx, taking the derivative of this function here, u with respect to x, by saying the derivative of 28x plus 6 is just 28. So then my chain rule says that dy dx, the derivative of this function here with respect to x, is dy du times du dx, that I have to multiply um, the rate at which y is changing with respect to u times the rate at which u is changing with respect to x. And I would get 100 u to the 99 times 28. And since I want the derivative of y with respect to x here, I would need to then replace u here um, with how it's defined, so my final answer would be in terms of x. So I'd have 128x plus 6 to the 99 times 28. Okay, so that's one way we can go through um, and apply the chain rule. That help allows us to clearly see the different pieces and work through it step by step. Um, how we'll often do this as we um, get pretty comfortable with this is we'll do it um, in not quite so many steps. So I'll say that the derivative of y is the derivative of my outside function f, so that's 100 times something to the 99, then evaluated at the inside function g, so that's evaluated at 28x plus 6, and then I will multiply this times the derivative of that inside function, which is 28. So we can see with these two ways we get the same thing, in this first way, I'm just breaking it up into what those different pieces are um, and doing it in two steps where I find the derivative of, of um, each piece and then plug in my function um, second. Okay, So we want to get more practice um, applying this rule. So we're going to look at a couple more examples. So um, in this next example, we're going to stress the difference between f of g of x and g of f of x, and see that um, the chain rule will um, output a different derivative um, for these two different situations. So in the first example, I'm looking at y equals tangent of x to the fourth. And so what that means is tangent of x to the fourth. Okay, so when the four is written after the x like this, it means that I'm taking tangent of the angle x to the fourth. So in this example, my outside function is tangent of x, and my inside function is x to the fourth. In the second example, when I have that 4 written next to tangent, it means that I'm raising the tangent function to the fourth power. So this means tangent of x to the fourth. So here my outside function is x to the fourth, and my inside function is tangent of x. So this is just helping us see the, the difference, um, that the order of composition is different in these two examples. So now I'm going to go ahead and apply the rule. And I'm going to use that second formulation where we think about doing the derivative of the outside function, evaluated at the inside function, times the derivative of the inside function. So here, my outside function is tangent of x, so I need to know my derivative of tangent x, which is secant squared of x. So here it's the derivative of my outside function, secant squared, evaluated at that inside function. And then I have to multiply this times the derivative of my inside function. So the derivative of tangent x to the fourth becomes secant squared of x to the fourth times 4x cubed. Okay. So what about this second example? Well here my outside function is not tangent, but x to the fourth. So when I go to do the derivative of tangent of x to the fourth, I've got the derivative of the outside function, which is 4 times something cubed, evaluated at my inside function, so that's tan x, times the derivative of that inside function, so that's times secant squared x. So we need all of these different pieces. Notice with the chain rule, we're always going to have when I'm doing a single application of the chain rule, it's always going to be a product of two terms. Um, when we did the product rule, we learned that whenever we, we apply the product rule, I'm going to end up with a sum of two different terms. And I know I've done the product rule incorrectly if I only have a single term. 
with the quotient rule I know that excuse me with the chain rule now I know that when I apply the chain rule I need to end up with a product of two different things okay so let's look at a couple more um, examples to practice this idea here we clearly see that we ended up with two different answers let me just simplify these so this y prime is 4x cubed secant squared x to the fourth whereas the second one is 4 tangent cubed x secant squared x so we can see that those derivatives are different so that order of composition makes a difference okay so here a couple more examples we want to find the derivative when f of x equals the square root of 1 minus 2x so this is 1 minus 2x to the 1 half power so if I'm going to go ahead and take that derivative, I have to do the derivative of the outside function. So notice the outside function is something to the 1 half power. So I got to do 1 half times that something raised to the negative 1 half power. So this is evaluated at that inside function. So that's what goes inside my parentheses times the derivative of that inside function, which is negative 2. So I see this one can simplify to negative 1 over the square root of 1 minus 2x in this situation. Okay. So in this next example, I've got a little bit more going on. I actually have a composition of three functions. So my outside function is sine. The next function that I encounter is 4 cosine of something. And then the innermost function is that 3x. So I'm going to have to apply the chain rule twice in this example. Okay. So we're going to get more practice with repeated chain rule and some other um, applications of chain rule in class, but this is our first example where we see we're going to have to use the chain rule more than once. And when you start repeating the chain rule, you have to be very careful, make good use of parentheses to keep track of um, your different steps. So we'll go ahead and do this one. So I've got y prime. So I need to do the derivative of my outside function, so that's cosine, because sine is my outermost function, evaluated at my inside function, times the derivative of my inside function. So I'm going to write it like this to remind myself that taking this derivative is now going to require, again, another application of the chain rule. So we go down to the next line, and we've got cosine of 4, cosine of 3x, times... I want to use some parentheses here. So the derivative of this is going to be the derivative of my outside function. So that's the derivative of cosine times 4. So that's negative 4 sine 3x. I got to evaluate it at that inside function. And then I need to multiply this times 3, which is the derivative of 3x. So in this case, I ended up with all products. Um, sometimes I have to be careful because the derivative, my, uh, my inside function could be a sum. So the parentheses would be even more important there. Um, here, I can simplify this by just multiplying everything through. So I end up with negative 12 cosine of 4 cosine 3x sine of 3x. So we applied the chain rule here. And then we applied the chain rule again, and then we just simplified. Okay, so we've seen a few different applications of the chain rule in some examples. Um, our last example is where we, instead of being given a um, algebraic equation, we're given a table of values, and we have to figure out um, the derivative based on that information. So here's our last example for for today's lecture. So. We have h of x equals f of g of x, and we want to use this table of values to compute um, h prime of 2. So we like these kinds of problems because we practice the rule, um, general, sort of a little bit more conceptual, um, and then we can figure out um, the value at a particular point just given some limited information. So I've got h, prime of, uh, h of x here. h prime of x, using my um, chain rule, is f prime of g of x times g prime of x. Okay, that's that derivative of the outside function evaluated at the inside function times the derivative of the inside function. So then I can go ahead and find h prime of 2 by just substituting 2 for x and then I just need to plug in some values for my table. So I see that g of 2 is 1 and g prime of 2 is 7 and f prime of 1 is negative 6. So I get 
um, negative 6 times 7. So I get negative 42 as my answer. Okay. So we're going to be talking more about applications of the chain rule and some um, a few other uh, derivative rules in class as well. Um, please let me know if you have any questions on anything.